In Syria, it is said that if Jamal Pasha scratches his nose when he meets someone, it signifies that he is contemplating exile. And if he strokes his beard, it means he's deciding whether to forgive or not. Fear only if he twirls his mustache. Then, this meeting could lead to death. This is how Turkish writer Fali Rifki Atay described Jamal Pasha, whom he had the opportunity to know closely in his book Zeytin Dayu. He was a commander who left deep imprints with his actions in Arab geography, who had a significant influence on Turkish Arab relations even in later periods, who was affectionate when necessary and ruthless when necessary. Here is the story of Jamal Pasha, whom the Arabs nicknamed Arab Butcher. Jamal Pasha was born on May 6, 1872, on the island of Lesbos, which was still in Ottoman territory at the time, as the son of the military doctor Mehmed Nesib Effendi. He was educated in military schools from his childhood and joined the army as staff officer in 1895. Jamal Pasha's first duty in which he came to the forefront on the stage of history was the governorship of Adana. On April 14, 1909, Armenians had started a rebellion in Adana to establish an independent state. Thousands of innocent people, both Armenians and Turks, lost their lives as a result of the incidents caused by the Armenian gangs. Jamal Pasha was sent to the region to suppress the rebellion, both as the governor of the region and as the commander with full authority. He showed great success in suppressing the events and punishing those responsible. Although he was seen as a cruel ruler by many as the result of his suppression of the riots with bloody actions, he made a great contribution in healing the wounds of the aggrieved Armenians in Adana and the Turkish families who were harmed in the riot in a short time. The second important event in the life of Jamal Pasha was the canal operation he undertook against the British. The lands of Egypt had been captured by the British. In order to drive the British out of Egypt, he put into practice a plan called Operation Canal. Jamal Pasha mobilized on January 7, 1915, with an army of about 14,000 men. However, due to the desert conditions and the difficulties encountered in crossing the canal, the desired results could not be obtained from the first and second canal expeditions. Although he could not expel the British from Egypt, Jamal Pasha, who wanted to serve in a region close to them, continued his duty in Syria as the commander of the 4th Army. Jamal Pasha served as the head of both civilian and military bureaucracy during this period. Therefore, he was both an army commander and a governor general with wide powers. In other words, he was the uncrowned king of Syria. In order to ensure the most effective Ottoman state authority in the region, which was extremely chaotic due to the Arab revolt initiated by Sharif Hussein, he resorted to radical and bloody actions. He fought not only against the rebellious Arab nationalists, but also against the Zionists who aimed to establish a Jewish state in Palestine and break away from the Ottoman rule. He forced all Jews who were not Ottoman citizens to become Ottoman citizens and deported those who refused. Similarly, he exiled some of the Arab tribal leaders, whom he suspected of being involved in separatist organizations in collaboration with the British, together with their families, and executed those who did not obey him. He tried the rebel Arabs he captured as criminals and executed the death sentences issued as a result of the trial. Even if the stop the execution letters from Istanbul came, he could not listen to these letters and carried out the execution. Thus, he managed to establish his absolute authority in the region, so much so that it was impossible to speak above his word in Syria. Even questioning his orders became a criminal offense. Jumal Pasha, who was subjected to intense criticism due to the dozens of Arab nationalists he executed in Beirut and Damascus and the harsh policies he implemented, was nicknamed by the Arabs during this period as Jazar meaning butcher and al sava meaning bloodshed. Jamal Pasha did not forgive any Arab who participated in the revolt, but he served as a statesman to those who were not involved in the revolt. Even during the war and rebellion, he also endeavored to continue the reconstruction, construction and public works activities, 
He focused on the construction of railways, reconstruction of cities, roads, orphanages, and schools in Syria. During his reign, there was a remarkable schooling in Syria, and moreover, Syrians were recruited into the Ottoman army more than any other time in Ottoman history. However, in 1917, Jamal Pasha was dismissed from his post in Syria after successive defeats. Unable to resist the attacks of the British and French armies, the superior powers of the time. Turkish writer Fali Rifkiyate wrote that Jamal Pasha was crying at the railway station on his way back home. I wish we had spent our blood and money on Antolia. When the Ottoman Empire became one of the losers of World War I, Jamal Pasha traveled to Odessa on a German submarine in 1918, together with Enver and Talat Pasha, and from there to Berlin. As a result of the trial held by the court established by the British in Istanbul, in his absence, it was decided to dismiss him from the army and execute him for the offense of causing the revolt of the Arab elements living in the Ottoman Empire. Of course, since he had fled abroad, the death sentence could not be carried out. Jamal Pasha, who retreated for a while in this process, could not stand any longer after Mustafa Kemal Pasha started the national struggle in Antolia and took action to organize a revolution against the British in Afghanistan. The aim of this move was to threaten the British with a revolt in Afghanistan and weaken their position in Antolia. The Russians also welcomed this plan and supported it at first. On the other hand, Enver Pasha and Mustafa Kemal Pasha continued to keep in touch. But after a while, things started to go wrong. The Germans didn't provide the weapons they promised. The Russians suspected that Jamal Pasha, together with Enver Pasha, was aiming to unite the Turks in Russia and all of Asia, until they changed their policy. Thus, Jamal Pasha was left alone in his struggle. He left Afghanistan and went to Tbilisi. While he was making preparations to return to Turkey, he was ambushed and martyred on the evening of July 21, 1922, together with his two aides. Whether this assassination was organized by the Armenians or the Russian Secret Service is still unclear today. His body, which was first buried in Tbilisi, was brought to Azurum by the commander of the Eastern Front of Kazim Kajabikar upon the instructions of the Ankara government and buried in the Martyrdom Cemetery here. Until the last moment of his death, Jamal Pasha lived with the dream of returning to his country one day, just like Enver Pasha, but he would return to his homeland in a coffin, just like Enver and Talat Pasha.